Would you risk your life for your dog? It's a question I never thought I'd face until that chilly October night in San Francisco. I had just moved to the city a few months earlier, settling into a cozy apartment in the heart of the Mission District. The vibrant culture, bustling streets, an endless array of restaurants and shops made it the perfect place for someone like me. But what really sealed the deal was the dog-friendly environment. I had a four-year-old golden retriever named Max, who was more than just a pet. He was my best friend and companion. Little did I know that one ordinary evening walk would turn into a nightmare I couldn't escape from, a chilling encounter that left me questioning everything I thought I knew about the people around me. I remember that evening vividly. The sun had set, and a cool breeze was sweeping through the city streets. Max was excited for his usual walk, his tail wagging with enthusiasm as I grabbed his leash and headed out the door. The Mission District was alive with activity, a kaleidoscope of lights, sounds, and people enjoying the nightlife. As we made our way down Valencia Street, I couldn't help but feel a sense of contentment. Life was good, and Max was thriving in this vibrant city. We walked past a few familiar faces, neighbors who waved and smiled as Max trotted alongside me, sniffing every lamppost and mailbox. It was a routine we'd settled into nicely, a comforting ritual that marked the end of each day. But as we turned the corner onto a quieter street, something felt off. The air seemed heavier, the shadows longer, and I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. I shook off the unease, blaming it on an overactive imagination, and focused on Max, who was tugging eagerly at the leash. He was leading me towards Dolores Park, one of his favorite spots to run and play. I let him guide me, trusting his instincts as I always did. As we approached the park, I noticed a figure standing under a dim streetlight. It was a man, tall and lean, with a hood pulled low over his face. He was staring intently at us, his posture tense and unmoving. A shiver ran down my spine, but I tried to ignore it, focusing instead on Max, who seemed unfazed by the stranger's presence. We entered the park, the grass still damp from a recent rain. Max bounded ahead, chasing after the remnants of a soggy tennis ball someone had left behind. I watched him play, his joy infectious, and for a moment, I forgot about the man watching us. But as I turned to leave, I realized he was following us. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up as I realized the man was trailing us at a distance. The park, which had felt like a safe haven just moments before, now seemed like a stage set for something sinister. I tried to reassure myself that it was just a coincidence, but my instincts were screaming at me that something was wrong. Max, blissfully unaware, continued to frolic, chasing after a squirrel that had darted up a tree. I called him back to me, my voice trembling slightly as I tried to mask my growing unease. He trotted over, tail wagging, oblivious to the tension in the air. As we turned to leave the park, the man quickened his pace, closing the gap between us. My heart pounded in my chest, each beat echoing in my ears like a drum. I glanced around, hoping to spot another person or a familiar face, but the park was eerily deserted. I gripped Max's leash tighter, trying to project a confidence I didn't feel. Come on, buddy, I whispered, urging him forward as I picked up my pace. The man's footsteps mirrored mine, growing louder and more insistent with each step. I could feel his eyes on me, a burning intensity that made my skin crawl. As we reached the edge of the park, I made a split-second decision to confront him. I spun around, pulling Max close to my side, and faced the stranger. Can I help you? I asked, my voice wavering despite my attempt to sound assertive. The man stopped a few feet away, his face obscured by the shadows of his hood. He didn't respond at first, just stood there, his silence more unnerving than any threat he could have uttered. My heart raced as I tried to read his intentions, every instinct screaming at me to run. Finally he spoke his voice low and gravelly. You have a beautiful dog, he said, his words dripping with an unsettling undertone. What's his name? Max, I replied cautiously, my eyes never leaving his face. My mind raced with possibilities of what he might want. Was he simply a dog lover, or did he have more sinister intentions? The man nodded slowly, his gaze shifting from me to Max. I've seen you around here before. You two make a nice pair. His words hung in the air, heavy with implication. I forced a smile, trying to defuse the situation. Thanks, we love it here, I said, 
my voice betraying the anxiety bubbling beneath the surface. We should be going now. As I turned to leave, the man took a step forward, his presence looming. Take care now, he said, his voice trailing after us like a shadow. I hurried away, Max's leash wrapped tightly around my hand. My mind was racing with a thousand thoughts, trying to process what had just happened. Was it an innocent encounter, or something more? Once we were a safe distance away, I allowed myself to breathe again. The streets were busier here, bustling with life and noise, a comforting contrast to the eerie stillness of the park. I glanced back over my shoulder, but the man was nowhere to be seen, swallowed by the darkness from which he had emerged. I led Max home, my mind replaying the encounter on a loop. Something about it felt off, like a puzzle with missing pieces. I tried to shake the feeling, telling myself that not every stranger was a threat, but the unease lingered, gnawing at the edges of my thoughts. Back in the safety of my apartment, I locked the door behind me and let out a shaky breath. Max, blissfully unaware of the danger we might have escaped, flopped onto the floor with a contented sigh. I envied his ability to live in the moment, free from the worries and fears that plagued my mind. I sat down at my desk, trying to distract myself with some work, but my thoughts kept drifting back to the man in the park. Why had he followed us? What was his true intention? The more I pondered it, the more unsettling the encounter became. Unable to shake the feeling of being watched, I decided to search online for any reports of suspicious activity in the area. It was a long shot, but I hoped it might ease my mind. As I scrolled through local news websites and community forums, a pattern began to emerge. There had been a series of incidents reported in the neighborhood over the past few weeks. People had described encounters with a man matching the stranger's description, always near parks and walking trails. The reports were vague but consistent, a feeling of being followed, an unsettling interaction, a lingering sense of unease. The realization hit me like a punch to the gut. This wasn't just a one-off encounter, it was part of something bigger, something I couldn't ignore. I felt a chill run down my spine as I realized how close we might have come to danger. I couldn't shake the thought that we were being watched, our every move observed by someone with unknown intentions. And the worst part was, I didn't know what to do about it. Was this man targeting dog owners? Or was it just a twisted game he played with unsuspecting strangers? Sleep didn't come easy that night. Every sound outside my window set my nerves on edge. The distant hum of traffic, a car door slamming, a group of people laughing on their way home. Max lay curled at the foot of my bed, a comforting presence that didn't quite manage to calm my racing thoughts. I kept thinking about the man, how his eyes seemed to pierce through the shadows. My imagination conjured up all kinds of sinister scenarios. What if he was waiting for us again? What if he had followed us home? The next morning, I awoke to the sound of Max's tail thumping against the wall. The sun had barely risen, casting a soft golden light across the room. I felt exhausted, my mind still clouded by the encounter from the night before. But I knew I couldn't let fear control me. I needed to take action. I got up and started my morning routine, trying to focus on the familiar comforts of everyday life. As I brewed my coffee, I made a decision. I would reach out to the local community, see if anyone else had experienced anything similar. Maybe we could piece together what was happening and protect each other. With my coffee in hand, I sat down at my laptop and logged into a neighborhood social media group. It was a close-knit community where people shared everything from lost pet notices to recommendations for local services. If anyone had information about the man, they'd be here. I crafted a post, detailing my encounter in the park and asking if anyone else had seen the same man. As I typed, I felt a sense of relief. I was doing something, taking control of a situation that felt increasingly out of my hands. Within minutes, the replies started pouring in. People shared their own unsettling experiences, strange encounters in the park, odd interactions with a man who seemed overly interested in their dogs. It was clear that this wasn't just in my head. Others had felt the same unease, the same sense of being watched. One message stood out among the rest. It was from a woman named Sarah who lived a few blocks away. She described how the man had followed her home one evening after she left the park with her dog. She hadn't reported it, thinking she was just being paranoid, but now she wasn't so sure. 
Feeling a mix of relief and dread, I reached out to her privately. We agreed to meet up later that day to discuss what we knew. I felt a sense of solidarity, knowing that I wasn't alone in this. As the day went on, I kept a close eye on Max. Every time we stepped outside, I felt a knot tighten in my stomach. I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, that the man could be lurking around any corner, waiting for the right moment to approach us again. That evening, I met Sarah at a local coffee shop. She was in her early 30s, with a warm smile that belied the fear I saw in her eyes. We exchanged stories, each of us confirming the other's suspicions. I think he's targeting people with dogs, Sarah said, her voice barely above a whisper. It's like he's waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I nodded, my mind racing with possibilities. But why? What does he want? Sarah shook her head, her expression one of genuine concern. I don't know, but I've heard of a few incidents where dogs have gone missing from yards. It could be related. We spent the next hour discussing our options. Reporting the incidents to the police seemed like the logical step, but without concrete evidence, it felt like an uphill battle. We decided to keep each other informed, to spread the word among our neighbors, and to remain vigilant. As we parted ways, I felt a sense of determination. We wouldn't let fear dictate our lives. We would stand together, protect our community, and keep our dogs safe. I walked back home with a newfound sense of purpose. This was my neighborhood, and I wasn't going to let a stranger turn it into a place of fear and anxiety. I had a plan, and it started with keeping Max and the other local pets safe. The first step was to take precautions. I made sure to vary our walking routes, avoiding the park where the encounter had taken place. I also began carrying a whistle and pepper spray, just in case. It wasn't much, but it gave me a small sense of control in an unpredictable situation. I also reached out to the local police department, sharing the details of the encounter and the pattern we'd noticed in the neighborhood. The officer I spoke with was sympathetic, but without more concrete evidence, there wasn't much they could do. Still, they promised to increase patrols in the area, especially around parks and dog-friendly spots. It was a small comfort, knowing that they were aware of the situation and willing to keep an eye out for anything suspicious. Meanwhile, the online neighborhood group buzzed with activity. People shared updates, coordinated group walks, and even set up a watch program to keep an eye on the parks during peak hours. It was heartening to see the community come together, united by a shared goal of keeping our neighborhood safe. As the days passed, the tension slowly began to ease. The stranger was nowhere to be seen, and life in the Mission District gradually returned to normal. Max and I settled back into our routine, though I remained vigilant, my senses heightened by the experience. One afternoon, as we strolled through a different part of town, I noticed a man watching us from across the street. He was tall, with a hood pulled low over his face, and my heart skipped a beat. Was it the same man? Or just my imagination playing tricks on me? I tightened my grip on Max's leash and continued walking, refusing to let fear take hold. But I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being followed, that the stranger was still out there, watching and waiting. That evening, I decided to install security cameras around my apartment. It was a precautionary measure, a way to keep an eye on things even when I wasn't home. It gave me some peace of mind, knowing I could monitor the area and keep Max safe. The cameras were set up within a few days, their lenses capturing every angle of the front and back entrances. I checked the footage regularly, scanning for any signs of the stranger or anything unusual. It was on one of these checks that I noticed something chilling. There, in the grainy footage from the previous night, was a figure standing just beyond the glow of the streetlight. The man, watching my apartment, his face obscured by shadows. Panic surged through me as I watched the footage on repeat, my mind racing with possibilities. The man was back, and he knew where we lived. Every shadow outside my window suddenly felt like a threat, every noise a potential danger. I quickly shared the footage with the police, hoping it would be enough to prompt action. The officer I spoke with agreed to increase surveillance in the area, assuring me they were taking the situation seriously. But the fear lingered, a constant companion that refused to be silenced. I began to notice subtle changes in Max's behavior, too. He seemed more alert, his ears perked up at the slightest sound, his gaze constantly scanning the surroundings. 
It was as if he sensed the danger, too. Despite the heightened security, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, that the man was biding his time, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. I took every precaution, never leaving Max alone for long, and keeping a close eye on him whenever we ventured outside. Days turned into weeks, and the man remained elusive, like a ghost haunting our every step. I heard from Sarah occasionally, who reported similar sightings near her apartment. It was clear we were dealing with someone who was persistent, someone who wouldn't give up easily. Then, one evening, as I was reviewing the footage from the security cameras, I noticed something that sent a chill down my spine. The man had returned, but this time he wasn't alone. There was another figure with him, a woman, her face obscured but her posture unmistakably tense. They stood there for a few moments before disappearing into the night, leaving behind a sense of dread that was impossible to shake. It was a stark reminder that the threat was still very real, and that we couldn't let our guard down. With the help of the community, we continued to monitor the area, keeping each other informed and watching for any signs of the strangers. The police increased their patrols, but the man and his accomplice remained elusive, slipping through the cracks like shadows in the night. As the weeks went by, the fear slowly began to subside, though it never fully disappeared. Max and I resumed our walks, sticking to busy areas and avoiding any isolated spots where we might be vulnerable. The strangers never reappeared, but the experience left a lasting impact, a reminder of how quickly our sense of security could be shattered. I learned to trust my instincts, to stay vigilant, and to appreciate the strength of community in times of uncertainty.